Yeah, yeah gameplay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. With the game. All right, so uh, I am the lovely and talented Norman Rafferty. I'll be your host today. Uh, I am the host, and everyone else is a player. They each have a character object that they will play. And traditionally, what we do is we go around the table, and we have people introduce their characters. I'm going to go ahead and start with Theta, because he is the first. Theta, what is your character's name, species, and career? I am Fang of the Thousand Cuts. I am a centipede vagrant warrior. All right. So basically, um, yes. So you go around uh, slicing things up. So you're from far country of Zhangyi's, from the Book of Jade. Uh, what is your motto? I will fight you to the death if need be, in order that it may never be said of me that I was not a warrior. That's going to cost so much to put on your tombstone. That's all right. The other guy and for it. <laughs> That's why you have to win all those fights to earn fight money. Um, speaking of winning those fights, what's your starting goal? Win a fight. All right. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and do uh, Turtle John's character. Turtle John, tell us your character's name, species, and career. Uh, my character's name is Captain Samuel Enderl. My career is dilettante slash pirate king. And my species is cheetah. Yeah, so you're dual class. You're both Dilton and Pirate. No, no, no. I'm just Dilton. I just call myself a Pirate. Oh, you just call yourself the Pirate King? Okay. Oh, yeah. Someone here is dual class. Um, we'll get so to them later. Good. Okay. So you're so you're a Dilton slash, you know, call yourself a Pirate yeah. King. Um, and um, what was your motto? Uh, my motto is, why fight when you can negotiate? And what is your starting goal? Uh, my starting goal is to get drunk. All right. <laughs> I'm a pirate king. I'd rather talk than fight, and I'd rather get drunk than talk. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities are straight on this one, I, I love his priorities. And I'm king, bud. All right. Uh, I guess we'll do Another Griffin. Bug Griffin. For the king. Not before the king. Uh, you, king is a bar tab. Uh, so... Uh, Turtle John, no, not Turtle, we just Turtle, uh, Griffin, derp. Uh, Griffin, tell us your character's name, species, and career. Uh, character's name is Donovan of the Bell. He is a raven, an elementalist, and a thaumaturge. Yeah. <laughs> he is an obsessive little raven, and his motto is, stars and study lead the way. All right, I like it. You got a starting goal? He wants to learn something new. Uh, an excellent goal. <laughs> okay, uh, after Griffin was a uh, quote man. All right, I'm playing Ada, a uh, assassin fox. Uh, she is, uh, her motto is, if you lose sight of me, you've already lost. And my <laughs> goal is to prove myself as, and I've had trouble figuring out exactly what level I want to set this at, since one word literally determines how difficult this is between competent, expert, and master assassin. So I just picked, fuck it, let's go as hard as I can, master assassin. Your goal is to be a master assassin. Actually, I, there was one difficulty higher, but legendary assassin is just way too hard to find. Well, you could be god tier assassin. assassin I mean, you don't have god. to be good to be legendary. Or I could yes. say I'm the assassin. I have to kill every other assassin to become the only assassin there. The <laughs> right. assassin. Well, that that would actually be the hardest. I think that's actually so above God of Assassins. So that's um, planet that's wiping out an entire job career. Uh so when people ask you your job, though, uh, what do you, I assume you don't say assassin. Uh, well, well, when people ask what I do, I say. I do the. I take a joke from. Uh, I take a joke from uh, how I met your mother. And say, ha, please. <laughs> hmm. Just Interesting. Completely ignore the question. Okay, and now we have our uh, rare dark ninja. Wait. He's playing the red ball character, right? Yep. I have a. Um, my name is Reeve Wilhelm Badger Knight Errant, and my motto is a tale is, but half told when only one person tells it. My goal is spread the tales of the great badger wars to the far reaches of the land. Wow, so we've got a high-ranking party here, because we've got the Pirate King's a dilettante, <laughs> uh, Nick's a dilettante, and you're mm -hmm. actually uh, um, uh, Reeve here. Yeah, Reeve here is actually uh, a knight, which is also a noble. 
So we have a seriously blooded party here. I'm gonna have to sit around and feel inferior, aren't I? Um, uh, it's up <laughs> to the no peasant. Yeah. Everyone now ranks you. Um, All right, new goal, become a noble. Uh, you can add that as a goal. Um, the, yeah, the, diff before. the difficulty in becoming a noble is you have to get what's called a patent of nobility, and those are incredibly rare because nobles don't like to sign off on that um, because uh, um, they're snobs. <laughs> Who knew that nobles were snobs? Oh, no way. But there are other ways to get a um, patent of nobility. So, um, well, I as the game host present a situation. So uh, there is, uh, in the known world uh, of Ironclaw, the, probably the richest of all of the kingdoms is Calabria, possibly because Zhang Gao is easily the largest of all of the kingdoms, but not all of it is in one place. So also Zhang Gao is full of 12 different states, each of which has a rotating mandate of emperor uh, that rotates per dynasty. So they're having, they're having a little trouble keeping everything together. Uh, Zhang Gao is available in the Book of Jade. Galabria is in the Omnibus, which is what the link is for. So you can learn how that works. But today, um, we're going to have all of you, for one reason or another, uh, have um, moved to far off Akoma. Uh, and Akoma is actually the name of the continent, not the kingdom. Uh, Akoma is one of the biggest, largest trading partners. Uh, they uh, ha um, are basically part of the big triangle between Zhang Gao. Um, this is the place where a lot of people um, get a lot of their gold and diamonds because there's a lot of undiscovered country uh, here. And uh, Akoma is a very large uh, continent, but the two major players in Akoma are the Sultanate, which is normally called the Delton Sultanate because there's some dispute over who actually owns it. But they own the Delton Valley, which is a very large river uh, that deposits at the largest port, uh, the City of the Sun. Um, they have a much more flowery name in their own language, but City of the Sun and Cities of Three Gates are good names to learn. So that's where we are. Uh, this is one of the largest port cities, and it is owned technically by the Safida of the Delton Sultanate, uh, but the current ruling dynasty is a uh, dynasty of cobras, but their queen is in exile. They give you guys some backstory here. Uh, they've got Yorka the Usurper is currently on the throne, or Yorka the, to her face, it's Yorka the First. But if you don't like, but if you're, uh, if you're uh, one of the rebels, it's Yorka the Usurper. The Anatolian Empire is uh, further east of here, and they want this port city so bad because it's the major trading uh, partnership. Uh, and so they have gone ahead and occupied the city. Often you will see the Janissaries, which are these guys in these red fez caps and red uh, jackets or red vests. They wear red so they can stand out. When you see these guys walking up and down the street, those are mercenaries and the employ of the Anatolian Empire. Kind of like Roman legionnaires in the late Roman period. Uh, I'll leave it to the pedantry people. But basically the thing is, watch out for them. They represent the Anatolian Empire, and the Anatolian Empire must be sure the taxes are paid on time. The Janissaries are armed with guns, and they have the authority to arrest you. Uh, even though they are technically commoners. And um, so they are basically the law. So the city is basically occupied by the Anatolian Empire. But there are a lot of people who want... Uh, Miriam, the true empress, I say, uh, depending on who you ask, is currently in exile. And the city has a problem where even though the ruling the the merchants and the nobles said oh yeah sure anatolia is great you guys can rule us just fine uh you know please don't burn down my house and kill my children in front of me um and the anatolians would say you know, we're not savages anyway this is where you are because you're in the city of the sun because so you want to be a pirate huh i am a pirate. I, uh, the best damn pirate you've ever seen Right. Now, some people will look to the Iron Claw book and ask, where is pirate as a career? And 
and it lists uh, either sailor or marine. Under marine, it says, the guys who work for us are called the privateers. The guys who work for them are called the pirates. The nuance here, correct. right. Um, so are you guys familiar with pirate lore and that kind of jazz? Generally. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys know what a letter of mark is, right? No. All right. So here's the deal. Say? All right, so anybody here play Sid Meier's Pirates? It's an awesome computer game, and they did a oh, Pirates yeah, update recently. Oh, for five minutes. Oh, man. Okay, so you might remember from Pirates that it's, you get your ship, and it's awesome. You go around blowing stuff up and, like, stealing stuff. And then you realize, well, wait a minute. I stole all this stuff. I have to go somewhere and sell it. And then you want to run into one of those ports where they go, it's a pirate, and they blow the crap out of you. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Right. So the key by being a successful pirate is having a place to sell your stuff. Now, the awesome part about Akoma is it's huge. So it has lots and lots of coastline. The City of the Sun is the best port and has docks and merchant trading stuff, but there are numerous places along the Corsair Coast, or Pirate Coast if you want to be blasé about it, where there are numerous pirate hideaways where you can go ahead and try to sell your stuff to other pirates. The problem with selling stuff to other pirates is... Um, they're they pirates. Hmm? They, they don't have to play fair. Yeah, they don't have to play fair. So if you want to make the big money, you kind of want to sell to the, Cal the, the Calabrese merchants or the Zhangis merchants or the Anatolian merchants. So to do that, you have to go into their ports. But you got a problem here because if you're a notorious pirate, other people will blow the crap out of you because you're a criminal. That's where we get letters of mark. It turns out that uh, Calabria is not owned by one country, but four uh, different kingdoms. Uh, and they all hate each other's guts. So they are fond of handing out letters of mark, which is basically a saying, um, we're going to give you a letter that says you work for us. And this will allow you to land at our ports and we won't blow the crap out of you like they do in Sid Meier's Pirates because you can show this letter that says you work for us. And this licenses you to enforce our law, which is a funny way of saying blow the crap out of other people we don't like. Yep. So getting a letter of mark gives you legitimacy. It means you're not just a person out there in the seas. Now, if you remember playing Sid Meier's Pirates, you can collect multiple letters of mark. Do you remember doing that? Uh, know, again, only played as far as five minutes and keep France wants you to go blow up England, and England wants you to go blow up France. Right, so you can actually... You letters and you're like, well... Right. You can get multiple letters. We're a little more complicated than that. So if you want to be a successful pirate, okay, you can just get a ship and start blowing the crap out of people. But if you want to make money, and most importantly, I believe we have one person here who actually wants to gain legitimacy with the Rinaldi. So if you want to gain legitimacy, you mean uh, legitimacy is a fancy word for saying other people in power back you up. So all yeah. of you, for one reason, have come here to uh, Sun City here in the Delta because your prospects back in your native countries were limited. Um, Fang, I'm guessing you came here because you just want to beat the crap out of people, right? Is that I right, need Data? to uh, practice my warrior skills on new prey. Right. I'm a master um, in Zungao, and I need somewhere new, and Akoma's where I decide to go. I mean, you know, it, it's where the winds take you. I'm a vagrant warrior. I'm vagrant. Right. And the fox assassin just goes around murdering people, so... Yeah, well, I'm actually part of a specific group, so I don't know if that has anything uh, to do with it. Are you a member of the Society of Assassins? Finally, we will defeat the Templars and gain access to Eden. No, it's the Force Ghost. Oh, so you? Oh, you're both uh, Zhangis. Okay. Technically, yeah. All right. Well, then, yeah. So you both have could have traveled. So basically, you're but you're both basically swords for hire or killers for hire. Sure. Right. Sure. I mean that that that's the difference between ass uh, that's the difference. Uh, oh my God! You're gonna make a quote. Too, Tired too, assassin. Which is that's the difference between someone who bludgeons their wife with a golf trophy. We're an assassin. I'm not a murderer, I'm an assassin. I mean, it's like killed for money. There's a difference. <laughs> yes. Right. The difference so, is I'm rich and he's just a crazy guy. <laughs> right. No, no one's paying me to kill you right now. 
Um, Although I will, right. to prove that I was a warrior. <laughs> right, well, Fang is only here to prove his skill, so you're, he's only here to fight worthy opponents. Only the I assassin, the top. And the assassin is worthy as a matter of paycheck. The fighter <laughs> wants to fight the, the assassin. What does he do? He pays the assassin to fight him. Ha-ha! <laughs> um, wow, that actually is... Pro I bet if I look through my Chinese lore, I could find a story like that. I bet. The world's okay. fucked up. That shit happens all the time. <laughs> right. And so, but over here we have the cheetah, the raven, and the badger. And so the three... The th um, now, um... Oh, man, I already forgot. Griffin, what's your raven's name again, Griffin? Uh, Donovan. It is also at the bottom of the screen. There we go. Griffin slash Donovan. Right. Yeah. So, Donovan, you're not actually a noble. You're just a wizard nut job, right? Correct. All right. But the three of you are all educated, because I think all three of you actually have literacy, because we have two nobles and a wizard, and all three of you can read. Oh, wait. These yep, are I can read twice. I think everyone can read. Right now, if you if you got reading twice, there's a rule in the book that says if you get reading twice, you can swap that out for increased career. Uh, I think the way I read it is that I have to get literacy and then I can pay to get the career. I don't oh, get that's right. literacy that's again right. from the career. Sir, my bad, I misquoted the rules. Right, because you it's actually cool. bought a second career. Right, and that's designed in the rules. So in other words, it's easier to multi-class if you're already related to that class. Like, for example, yeah. it's easy for a dilettante to cross train in night because they have nobility already and that's just a side effect of the rules and which i don't think is going to surprise anybody yeah so, it makes perfect sense in I fact we don't have literacy oh, oh you can read you can learn magic yes you have to uh, read and, and and donovan's actually built in that way in the rules that uh, i think he even says in thaumaturge most people aren't pure thaumaturges most people are either fighters uh, or they're wizards. They're, they're usually cross-trained in something else. I'm a church fighter. Sounds really good, though. Uh, it's that's the witch hunter career. It's the one. In, it's already in the book. Uh, and hey, it's just cool. all you all you do is learn anti magic and beat up wizards. Why do I have to pay that's just amazing. to be able to edit my fucking PDF? Why do you have to pay? Why do I have to pay just to edit my PDF? Uh, I'm not understanding. Uh, you okay. Mean, you, I'm. You know, I'm Adobe's the, holding him ransom. Yeah, I'm touching the I'm touching the character sheet, and Adobe is holding me for holding me for a ransom of fifteen dollars um, or greater. Since since we've already been at this for a couple hours, and we want people to actually listen to the podcast, this will not turn into my huge anti Adobe rant for the day. Go um, go go, Adobe hate hatred. Uh, no, no, no. Play yeah. The game. So we're gonna play the game. <laughs> we're so close to being on a pirate ship. Um, I uh, I never. Let's go. All right. Well, no, here's the other problem. You don't have a pirate ship. None of you three are from a, uh, unless, uh, did, did any of you, actually, I should correct this because there's elective gifts. Did any of you take the gift of wealth? Um, go, go, go. I mean, I would have. A resounding I, no. I probably would have if I could, but I did not. Oh, is that Nick? Nope. Yeah. Um, uh, Nick, if you want to erase luck and write wealth instead, I won't stop you. Wealth is so, the greatest power. Power of um, money. Okay, so 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 Nick, erase the gift of luck and write the gift of wealth. Now, many gifts in the game uh, have there is a exhaust and recharge system uh, in the game where many gifts can be tapped to invoke them. Like for example, if after failing a roll to persuade or reason with someone, you could tap your nobility. Uh, so you just like turn it ninety degrees on its side or put an X mark next to it or whatever. Uh, we call that exhausting in the book. You can exit out, exhaust, see how that works, uh, and say, screw the rules, I have money. And then you just tap your gift of wealth or nobility and say, I'm asserting my influence here. I'm a rich person, you have to do what I say. Or I'm a noble and you have to do what I say. And uh, so you can just do that. And then it, and it will recharge after a certain amount of time because people get sick of your crap. Uh, so... Currently, I guess, uh, Nick, uh, as a Rinaldi, is probably the sponsor of Captain Sam's ship. Because, Sam, you don't have any money. Now I'm poor ship. Now, what you do have is entitlement. That's actually how the actual word. You have a title. Therefore, you are entitled and have entitlement. Go, you guys. 
So, but unfortunately, in order to get a boat, you have to buy a boat uh, and uh, get it chartered. Have any of you heard the phrase port of convenience before? I've heard of it. Can't say that I know it. All, all right. So if you register your ship in Calabria or Zhongao, you'll have to pay Calabrian duties or Zhongi's duties on it simply for having the ship existing like every month or year using any law they want because taxation representation, what the hell is that? Um, they'll, uh, you know, they'll charge you for it because also these letters of marks and licenses to have a boat uh, can get pretty expensive. And so you thought, well, wait a minute, why would we pay like an absorbent amount of fees to Calabria, which is full of, um, you know, where you have the, where you have the Rinaldi, who are money-grubbing bastards who don't recognize me as king, or even worse, the Bisclave, the other pirates, uh, who extort even more money and will sell you out at the lowest provocation because the Biscove guys want all the money and give you none of the support. Uh, and the other two guys, the Dolor and the Aberdepa, are not active in piracy. So that bites, but wait a minute. What if we went here to the Anatolian Empire who just recently grabbed this port city? They're going to give us a way sweeter deal if we go ahead and charter a boat here and then we could use this as ports and pay their duties, which are way less. And then when we sail into Calabria, because Calabria has trade agreements with Anatolia, we pay Anatolian taxes instead of Cal Calabrese taxes, and we'll make a killing. What if we just shoot everybody and ask questions later? That's great, but you have, yet. we can't do that. But you eventually have to sell their stuff. Otherwise, you're not pirates; you're just murderers. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference between pirates and murder robots. Uh, right. uh, yeah. We just employ magic people and we sell it to other realities. <laughs> <laughs> sell it uh, cross-dimensionally. The problem with the other realities is their money doesn't work in this one. No, uh, but the gold works from their reality in this one. Nope. Just beat the shit out of people with gold bricks. Uh, uh, when you go meet the people from other realities, they say, we didn't get rich by giving you guys our good gold. No, whatever. Anyway, uh, the other, yes, there are other realities in Iron Claw. They're even bigger jerks than this one. This is actually the best of all possible worlds. That's why you live in this one. So right. there's no uh, taxation without representation in this. Well, so world. no, your you, so your goal here is you figure also, um, uh, Nick. Uh, oh crap, I forgot Nick's character's name because it's not written here. Nick, uh, what was the name of uh, of your noble? It is Raki. Raki? Rakija. Rakija. Uh, yeah. The other problem is, Rakija, you want to claim legitimacy to the Rinaldi throne. Mm -hmm. uh, by wandering around your home city claiming your legitimacy, you probably, you're a little worried that you might not make any friends and you might make some <laughs> enemies. Yeah. In fact, you've heard rumors that some of the foxes that are running around are, are not actually just happy-go-lucky uh, courtesans or adventurers, but some of them are apparently paid killers. You wouldn't happen to know any paid killers, would you? <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> okay, good. Phew. Got sure thing there are no hired killers here. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so traveling to uh, Anatolia uh, gives you the advantage that you can build your power base in secret, get a bunch of stuff, and also... The Anatolians have guns, lots and lots of guns, and it might be possible for you to build a private army here and take it to your, um, you know, take it back home. So basically, I, th these are the reasons why I, as the game host, I need to improvise a reason of why you're all uh, here. Mm -hmm. and, and that sounds like a unifying thing, which is we've got the power block of the three nobles who are thinking, hey, you know, you've got the looks, I've got the brains, let's make lots of money. And then you went to go hire uh, some muscle and you found these guys. I mean, Fang wants to kill worthy opponents. Um, and... Um, Ada. Yeah, Ada. That's why I look, look at the notes here, Ada. I'm trying to remember what your monikers are. Because some of you wrote your moniker first and your character name second, and some of you wrote your character name first. So I put quotations so that 
you would be able to tell that that's the uh, profile name and not the character name. Um, so uh, Ada, uh, you know, Ada is a hired killer, and Fang is. I get Fang. You'll actually kill for money, won't you? I don't think you'd even have to pay. Kill for under any condition. You could just point at someone and be like, "Hey, that would be a good challenge." You know, I have no pay. morals, and I'll do anything. Well, I sometimes things. Yeah, Thana, you don't actually have no morals, right? I have all morals and no money. Uh, Thana may have disappeared. No morals and all money. Oh, you can't hear me? Yeah, now, there he is. I think oh, okay, no, when, I'm at, when I had the program open that I used to monitor the uh, Twitch chat, I guess you guys can't hear me when I'm talking. That's great. Yeah, you were muted. Nope, uh, yeah, I have no morals. If you look like a good okay. fight, if you talk down to me, if you <laughs> pay me, I will fight you. Yeah, or I will fight I mean, for you. In fact, or both. In fact, this this is highly amusing because "vagrant warrior" is the translation, but that basically means that he fights people but has no visible means of support. So technically, um, Theta, congratulations! You are genuinely playing a murder hobo. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You went through the books and found the career of murder hobo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is what we needed. I will fight you to the death in order for yes. it not to be said that I was not so, a warrior. If he's the murder hobo, what does that make me? The murder like homeowner? The murderer <laughs> of hobos. Yeah, basically. Uh no, you're the freelance killer. Uh -huh. I mean, or the freelance murderer. I mean, you you don't murder people unless they pay for it. That's what makes you an assassin. Right. You're a professional, you have standards. Whereas Fang will just kill you <laughs> either because, you know, be, because just to kill you. He just well, felt like it that day. He was like, this seems like a good plan. Mostly to prove his murdering skills, so don't cheese him off. Did not mess with him, man. It's going actually, I, I, this is, isn't quite apparent from right off the bat, but my character actually is attending to prove improved skill. So it's, yeah, it is well, to get paid, but it's also to get the skills to pay the bills. All right. I mean, that's what I do. So the fr now, this means that you have money. But the problem is you're going to have to charter a boat. Now, buying a boat outright, you, you can get some gifts in the game multiple times. So you've only got wealth once. So you're rich, but not filthy rich. Mm -hmm. Not yet. This, mean, this means you have enough to charter a boat. Uh, it mean, means you can either buy a tiny boat and be a tiny pirate. Or <laughs> you could buy a stake in the boat. pirate king. Well, you, you can... I mean, uh, uh, those of us who are long-term fans of Sid Meier's Pirates, you just buy a penance with, like, a one gun on it or whatever and sail around and do the penny anti-piracy. <laughs> what, if, what if we start low... What if we start at that low bu bullshit area and then build up to the superboat? Uh, well, that, what we need to do is we need to find another pirate who has less crew than us but a bigger ship and just get on his ship and take his ship away. That sounds... <laughs> Uh, that sounds like an excellent plan. And, and that's how I played Sid Meier's Pirates. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, no, actually, that makes a lot... Of, and also, remember, when you said take his ship away, you don't necessarily have to murder him to take his ship away. For example, if he's a drunk idiot like Captain Sam here, he might just sign it away. In fact, that's yeah. probably what happened to Captain Sam. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I wanted to be a pirate, but I like drinking a lot more and talking my way out of fights. So when they showed up and said, get off the boat or we'll stab you. <laughs> I was kind of like, well, I mean, if you insist. If you insist. And what did they do? Oh, Fang here to do all the heavy lifting. Very so it's convincing out. argument. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to go ahead and offer, um, you know, sometimes we have quest givers for this. But instead of having a quest giver, I'm going to go ahead and offer a goal to the entire party. This is going to be a party goal. Okay. And the goal is. Steal a ship. Charter. Yeah, 